Hi everybody, I am Sarah with the trains and I thought we'd get today's video started off with our wonderful shed rattling through Stowmarket. I am going to be heading off exploring some of the stations on the line between Ipswich and Cambridge. First of all today, we're going to be heading to Bury St Edmunds. We have made it to Bury St Edmunds. Now Bury St Edmunds originally opened in 1846 as a temporary little wooden station. This station isn't the original obviously because it's not made of wood um, and this opened in 1847. It was originally on the line between Ipswich and Bury St Edmunds but in 1854 the line was extended up as far as Cambridge a line from Long Melford reached the station in 1865 and a line to Thetford was opened in 1876. Sadly, the lines to Thetford and Long Melford have since closed. The line to Thetford closed to passengers in 1953 and then to freight in 1960. The line to Long Melford closed to passengers in 1961 and to freight in 1965. The engine shed here at Bury St Edmunds closed in 1959. During the Second World War, Bury St Edmunds played its part as an important freight location for the various air bases in East Anglia. Now that we've had that brief station history, let's have a look at the facilities here at Bury St Edmunds. As you can see, we have just got the two platforms here. Over here, we have got some cycle parking and a planter with a big plant of some description in it. If you can uh, identify it, uh, I'll give you some points. We've got the flappy plastic bin, plenty of benches, and this lovely canopy to shelter under, as well as an advertisement for the University of Suffolk, change more than your destination. Also a poster for the University of Derby. Is that a declaration of war on the University of Suffolk? Another great big planter. We have a departure screen, accessibility ramp, information for cyclists boarding the trains. Over here there is a help point and the access between the platforms. So we've either got the lift or we've got stairs. I'm intrigued to see where the lift goes, so let's go in the lift. Oh, there's also a grip bin. When I said I was intrigued to see where the lift goes, I meant in terms of level access, I know it goes to the way out. Platform 1. Doors opening. Lift going down. Going down? There's a down? Let's go down. Doors closing. Okay, so we've got two sets of doors in the lift at Bury St Edmunds. Which ones are going to open? Ground floor, ticket office. It's these ones. Doors opening. 
so here we've got the lift to platform two got the ticket barriers and out beyond the ticket barriers there is a little coffee shop oh toilets located on platform two and we've got the stairs to either platform i'm now going to take a walk out of the station and have a look around out there out here we've got the car park and the beautiful old station building from 1847. This is Grey 2 listed. Out the back of the station there is also a car park and a car wash. I am just going to nip back into the station to check my train times because I want to go back down the line to Elmswell and uh, I really don't want to miss that train. <laughs> God, I'm going to check the times. It's uh, only nine minutes till my next train. Now that signal box that you can see down there is Grade 2 listed. I have made it to Elmswell. Elmswell was opened by the Ipswich and Bury Railway in 1846. Under the Great Eastern Railway there was a waiting room and toilets added to the station. The barriers are going down. What's coming through? The barriers here at Elmswell go down for a good long while. At one time the Woolpit Brick Company had a narrow gauge horse-drawn tramway that led into the station yard here at Elmswell. This map from 1905 shows the tramway linking the station to the brickworks down at Woolpit. Later on there was a standard gauge line that was built to the east of this tramway um, and that led to the edge of Elmswell and then through street running into the yard. 
this line didn't last very long. I think the lease on it was only about 14 years. And in 1915, the lease expired. And in 1916, the track was lifted. In 1911, there was a new siding built to a bacon factory in the area. Mmm, yum. Sadly, that closed in 1964. <laughs> In 1974, the buildings on the down platform, which is the platform I'm standing on, were demolished. And in 1986, the signal box was sadly dismantled. Although in 1989-90, the existing remaining buildings uh, were actually refurbished. One interesting story I found about this station is that in the 1870s, two Greater Anglia guards were charged with the theft of three bottles of claret in a hamper bound for Elmswell. Two bottles were found in the sandbox in the brake van and one bottle was found hidden under a coat. Needless to say, they were sacked. Now that we've had that brief station history, let's now have a run round and rundown of the station facilities here at Elmswell. There are two platforms. I am on platform number two. We've got an accessibility ramp a keep back from the platform edge sign, a nice red bench, we've got a great big bus shelter style waiting shelter within which we've got four of the perchy style benches and a coffee cup, a station sign of course, another bench, oh and a flappy plastic bin, planters and a departure screen underneath which is a help point, a smart card reader over here, an older style Elmswell sign and some onward travel information. Access between the platforms is over the level crossing so do be sure to be on the right side of the barriers when they go down. Over here we have got a ticket machine. Is it working? Oh my god yes it is working. I thought the screen was blank. It's just so bright here. There's a help point and a how to get assistance for your journey sign. We have the remaining station building which provides a canopy to shelter under. Up here we've got information signs, a smart card reader, an ashtray, some more planters. This is a little travel agent called Travel Stop that's operating out of this building but they're not open at the minute. Ah, it says still here by appointment every Thursday. We've got departure screens, the flappy plastic bin, another bench, a rectangular flappy plastic bin, accessibility ramp, an Amazon locker. I, I think this is the first one I've seen today. Its name is Uch. We have got some cycle parking complete with bike and another red bench. So no matter which way I go at this station I've got the best part of an hour to wait. So I'm trying to decide whether I want to go to Thurston and then Needham Market or just go to Needham Market because uh, it is winter and the daylight still fades relatively early even though we're towards the tail end of February. Also it's cold. As I've just been reminded for the millionth time by station announcements, there is a football match on today. Uh, Ipswich are playing <laughs> United City which means the trains are a bit busier than normal. So I think one of the factors in making a decision is going to be, would I rather go to Ipswich Station when the football match is still on? Because then it'll be quieter. That might sway my decision. Now from looking at the map, I have seen that there is a public open space thingy about nine minutes walk away called the Pytel, the Pigtel. I don't know how it's pronounced, but I'm going to take a walk down there uh, because I haven't walked in any nice grassy areas and uh, I've actually got a pair of boots on today, so if there's any mud, I can handle it. found the place on Google Maps that is referred to as the Pytel um, or however you pronounce that word um, 
unfortunately the directions on Google were not accurate and tried to send me through somebody's house so it's actually not a nine minute walk it's it's longer than that which means I've got to go again because I don't want to get stuck on the wrong side of the barriers because I've decided I'm gonna to go to Needham Market and here are the boots I mentioned now let's get back to Elmswell station just time for a quick zoomed in shot of that church over there it's not a very good quality shot but I couldn't get any closer to have a better look so let's go as you can see I am now back at Elmswell ready for the next train to whisk me away to Needham Market oh the barriers are going down Oh, here we go. Ipswich, we will be calling at Stowe Market, Needham Market, and Ipswich. Isn't that lovely? The bi modes operating on electric. So much quieter. Nothing against diesel. Just they're a lot quieter when they're operating on electric. I am here at Needham Market. I am going to be making this my last station of the day. It's been an absolutely glorious day. Uh, this station was opened in 1846 by the Ipswich and Bury Railway as just plain Needham. The station was actually closed under British Rail in 1967 but was then reopened in 1971 as Needham Market. So let's see what facilities we've got here at Needham Market. and. Uh, I will be making a mention of the accessibility issue at Needham Market. So we've got two platforms here at Needham Market. One of the improvements that was done in 2015 was uh, this fibreglass covering on the platform, which is supposed to have snow melting and water management capabilities. So that's excellent for the winter months. Over here we've got a flappy plastic bin. We've got a brick-built waiting shelter in which we have got the only bench on the platform. Nearly tripped over there. Because there's a step up into the waiting shelter. We've got departure screens, a help point, the good old keep back from the platform edge sign. So the issue I was referring to is that although there were improvement work started on the station in 2015, this did not include any improvement to the access between the platforms. Uh, between the platforms the only option is a stepped underpass which we'll go through in a minute. So although you've got an underpass at stations like Ely they are completely smooth so they are suitable to be classed as level access. There's level access to platform one so if you head in towards Cambridge etc that's fine but there's no level access to platform 2 where I am at the moment which is the direction going towards Ipswich. Now let's take a wander over to the other platform. Over on platform 1 we have got this canopy to shelter under a bench, a lovely planter, the accessibility ramp, information about a rail strike, departure screen, the flappy plastic bin of course, right next to the ticket machine, yet another bench, another flappy plastic bin, information about buses, a help point, a smart card reader and a how to get assistance for your journey sign. This way is the level access out of the station. Out 
here we've got the original buildings at Needham Market Station, although sadly not in use as the station anymore. These were designed by Frederick Barnes and completed by a contractor named Daniel Rivet. We do have some lovely plaques on the wall about the history of the station and uh, it's just reminded me that this is indeed Grade 2 listed. Down there we have a plaque from Rail Track, the Rail Track Award. Do you really want an award from Rail Track? Dubious honour. Out here there is the car park and cycle parking, information signs, a defibrillator, and some more cycle parking. I really love this archway that goes over the ramp um, up to the platform. I think that's really quite something. Now, as I wanted to do some walking in a nice grassy area when I was at Elmswell, but didn't really get the chance, I'm going to try and find my way over to that lovely grassy area on the other side of platform two to have a wander around there and put my boots to use. Let's see if we can get there. Having a quick look at maps informs me that this was the Needham Market Cattle Tunnel. I am having to bend over double to get through here. Jesus, if you're over about five foot two, I would say uh, this is going to be a challenge, but hopefully it'll be worth it. Hooey, glad I'm seeing the osteopath on Monday. say that this is one of the nicest places I've been for a walk on any of my journeys. It is beautiful here. now back at Needham Market Station ready to get my train to Ipswich and subsequently to Norwich to go home. It's been a great day out. If uh, you're ever in the area I do recommend visiting Needham Lake Nature Reserve. It's a beautiful place for a walk. It's just time for me to say thank you everybody so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this please do leave a like and consider dropping a comment and consider subscribing. Special thanks to all of my donors on Ko-fi, my channel members here on YouTube and my patrons over on Patreon. You really do help this channel keep going and your names are going to be on the screen in just a second. Bye! As always, an extra special thank you to all of my patrons and channel members. If you'd like to become a patron or channel member, the links to do so are in the description below. Just one final look at the lovely station building. Welcome to this service for Ipswich. We will be calling at Ipswich. The next stop will be Ipswich.